influencers are powerful. They can influence the world by showing the unknown and highlighting an issue. As a social responsibility project during this nine-day adventure of Inflow Global Summit, we visited the Nizip refugee camp in Gaziantep on 17th of December and showed this common problem to the world. Let's see a short movie about our visit now. There's, a, there's so much love in the kids' eyes, you know. Um, children are so innocent. Um, I'm hopeful for the future. I wish we could spread love and, and just spread good all over the world. Turkey's doing so much to help them, but there's still so much more that could be done. Um, other countries should learn from what Turkey's doing. Um, open up borders, you know, love has no borders. Please welcome Sarah Sabri, Harjinder Singh Kukreja, and Didam Kaya Bayram, the digital producer of TRT World, as panel participants, and Gonja Karakash, the CEO of FX Burson Marsteller, as the session moderator. Hello, all, and welcome to uh, Inflow Summit. As everyone has very well uh, said before me, uh, the best part of being an influencer must be spreading goodness in the world. And that was the most um, empowering part of the program and inspiring part of the program for us. But you can never imagine um, the difference between watching the movies, hearing it from us, and going there and touching these people, talking to these people. And the actual being there uh, thing is very important. And what these precious influencers and our media members will be doing is um, during this polarized, highly polarized world, we'll be trying our best to create some goodness in people and to create awareness of the 4 million refugees that are currently living in Turkey, 400,000 of those in the camps. We just visited one camp and I would like to ask first Sarah, uh, your opinion. What did you imagine and what did you find there in the camp? Um, check, check. Okay. So, you know, we, we heard so much about the Syrian refugee problem. They've, all of the news have talked about it. We've seen it on social media. Um, going in, like, I had this kind of perspective that, you know, they were maybe mistreated, maybe they're uneducated. Um, but when I went there, the, the, the children, they, they, they were probably the most special part of, of uh, the visit. Um, but, you know, it's, um, it's, kind of, it's, it's kind of inspiring to see that they built their life um, and what Turkey has offered them. Um, uh, they, were, they were educated, they, they, all of them are going to school. Um, on, on camp, they had a hospital, they had a supermarket, They've, and their homes, they've made it into their own. Um, and I was surprised to see, like, for example, most of them knew what Facebook was. They all had Facebook. 
Um, so they were all like, let me go in and follow you. Mm. So they're just normal mm. kids, um, which is really, really nice mm -hmm. to see. And how gender can we have your ex impressions? I don't think this is working. So for me, it was a mix of emotions. On one side, I was really sad that they had to leave their countries. They lost family members, and they're now living in a different country. And on the other side, it was also a very, it was also a very satisfying to see that they're being taken care of by the Turkish government, by the UN agencies. And, and it's like a total mix of emotions for me, and a, and a wonderful experience which I feel that everyone must experience in their lifetime. And we all have the resources, the willingness, but by our visit, what we could create is that it's possible for you to go there. It's possible for you to contribute and serve in your own little way. The people... Yes. And from... without children, it will be a different place there. With children, there's always exactly. hope and beauty, though. And... Uh, Didam, you are a very young graduate, Yale graduate. She just started working as a digital producer in Tereta World. So, um, as influencers, as everybody in here, we are trying, trying to create goodness and awareness. And what is the role of media in that? You know, are you more responsible of doing these, or do we share the responsibility? <laughs> of course, that's a great question. And um, in today's world, I think that individuals who are broadcasting from their phones have as much influence as giant media organizations, if not more sometimes. Yeah. Um, in the very beginning, like Alvin was talking about how people started doing yoga. So it can be as small as our everyday practices and as big as a refugee crisis. So um, speaking a little bit to the TRT world's mission, maybe, of course, the biggest thing we can do is to create awareness, and especially when it comes to refugee children. But I want to talk a little bit about um, some of the other things that TRT World tries to do as well. So we started um, World Citizen, which is the humanitarian initiative that TRT World is doing, because we believe that as journalists, we can do a little bit more than maybe just tell stories. So one of the projects is called Am I Not a Child? And I don't know how many of you guys are aware, and I was very surprised when I found out, but there's over 170,000 children refugees that have gone lost in Europe that don't have parents. These kids are just lost on a company children. And this is the number that's a low estimate. Um, so what World tried to do was, first of all, aggressively cover this issue, of course. But also, we tried to create training programs and talk to these kids um, to try to prevent this kind of thing happening because a lot of these kids go into slavery, forced labor, child trafficking, and a whole bunch of other terrible conditions. Another one that we did, which is a little bit maybe similar to what you guys were trying to do, um, a bunch of my colleagues go and do a program called J4J, which is journalism for juniors. So we give these kids um, smartphones because a lot of them use Facebook and Instagram already. Um, so we try to give them a little bit more journalistic skills to allow them to tell their own stories. So as well as we doing mm -hmm. it as journalists, they themselves also can do it from their own accounts. Um, Harjinder, I have a question for you. You are very effective in Twitter. You have over a million followers. Yeah. Um, do you think Twitter is more of social response with more serious medium? And do you think you have more responsibilities? Or what's the future of social responsibility in regard to um, the awareness you create in Twitter? It's probably more than Instagram uh -huh, in some ways. Yeah, so Twitter is a beautiful platform, just like the others, Instagram and Facebook and the others. And, you know, the whole world is on Twitter. If you look at the people who matter, look at the politicians, people, celebrities. So it's, it's a very good platform to reach out to people who are really serious about causes. And uh, the future is really bright with, in terms of, you know, refugees. You know, we can talk about them and have the world really look at what's, what we can do about it. Yeah, but what is the authenticity, you know? How do you prove the authenticity of the content? Yeah, so like, you know, for example, in our case, like we went there and it was a first-hand experience. People could see our videos and also, you know, there's, there's a verified badge on Twitter. So you can, you know, you, are, you can likely trust people with the blue badge, you know, for verified content on Twitter and other platforms. Okay. Yes. And Sarah, Yes, please. If you have anything to add, but I want to ask you, you know, do you think there will be a solid outcome of the visit we have made recently? Or um, is, do we ask for something like call to action from the audience that we are talking to? Did you ask for anything to do from your audience? You are very powerful in Instagram. Yeah. 
Um, I mean, you know, uh, especially in this visit, for example, the main idea was to kind of spread awareness. It's kind of like this is an ongoing problem that's still happening. Um, and even if we perhaps like just making a small difference internally, that's enough. Um, but we, we as influencers have the power to drive them, to give them kind of a call to action, to uh, volunteer you guys. Um, let's let's uh, donate. You know, everybody wants to help, but just they don't know how. And I think this is where, as influencers, we kind of come in. Um, we we kind of give a voice to those who are unheard. Um, and it's important to make ourselves heard because we we challenge the stereotype. We challenge the 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 typical media. We challenge the stereotype. Like everybody, what what people think about. You know about Syrians, about Muslims, about all of these things. We are the ones that are capable of changing that. And regarding Tarata World, the, the figures you have given and the points you have covered are probably not known by most of the public in here. I didn't know that there were so. When you talk about hundreds of thousands of kids, it's something because when the visit, the camp we visited was only three thousand and seven hundred people. And it was a lot of people and a lot of kids. And, and it was uh, how the care they made and the effort for those people was amazing. And I was so proud of my country. But thinking about like multiplying these numbers in hundreds and imagining how many lost lives there are and how we don't see the refugees around us. You know, maybe we can start with noticing them. We have... We are seeing them every, in every corner, on the streets, uh, maybe in positions that we don't want to be encountered with. But most of the people don't see them. They react like they are not existing. And like with media and um, with social media and influencers. So maybe we can ask the people, um, it's 250 international and um, and, and many Turkish influencers in here. What do we ask them to do to help us? Um, I think the first thing I would say to that is, like you were framing the whole panel in the very beginning, this is a very politicized issue. So I think the first thing that we try to do as TRT World, and that I would ask each and every one of you guys to do, and some of you already are doing this with your work, is to humanize this issue. Because like you were saying, like each one of these individuals are people. So all of these kids have their own hopes, their own dreams. They have had their own past lives, and especially their parents. You know, a lot of them came here with established lives. They had professions they have these stories so I think to humanize these issues for the wider audience makes it more than numbers so it makes it more than just saying 170,000 children are lost you know that number is so abstract we can't really even imagine what that means oh, yes. but when you know it's Ahmed or it's little Mahmoud or it's Aisha then it's it's a little bit more than a number and Sarah um, to me I feel like it's always important to kind of check your intentions you know uh, it's good to spread good, you know. There's a reason why all of these big brands do CSR campaigns, for example. Um, and as influencers, it's always good to show brands and kind of get people to buy, but it's also good to kind of drive them to do good. Um, so I would, I would encourage people to, to get informed, especially influencers. We have this incredible power between our hands that we should use for good. Um, so get informed, you know, challenge the stereotype. Um, change the perspective of people um, and, and, and inform people and, and kind of drive them to the right direction. But do you also receive some criticism? Like from the, some, some of the, uh, uh, my, my tweets and my Instagram posts, the people write that, do you know the burden they are giving to our economy or some things like this? And how do you handle the criticism? You know? Would you like to answer that? Um, I mean, I like to think that we live in, if, if Gandhi was here today, he would probably be criticized with the world of the internet because there's always criticism. Mm. Uh, we, no matter how, how much good you're doing, there always people think that you could do better. Or, you know, if you're out here in Turkey, why aren't you doing it in your own country? If you're in your own country, isn't this something that's supposed to be between you and God or whatever? Um, so there will always be criticizers, but as long as you know that your intention is good and you're not doing it for the likes or you're not doing it as the savior, um, and you're doing it with the intention of, of spreading good, um, then I feel like you can kind of get over all of the criticism. Did you receive 
Hi, gender. Any criticism yourself? Yeah, like Sarah said, you know, criticism will always be there. Mm -hmm. Whatever on the planet you do, there will be some people who will say what they want to say, and it's okay for them to say, you know, but what matters in the end is you doing something for the planet, something good on the planet, and with the platforms that we have, the reach that we have, we must go all out and support good causes like this one. Like, personally, like, you know, I, I wish that the kids that I got photographed with or I met with, you know, I want them to have whatever my children have. And I would like to see them move from their containers to, to houses. And it's really amazing how the, how the government of Turkey, how the people of Turkey, you know, are really supporting them. Like, you know, I met so many people there, like, who are from Turkey and who are taking, taking care of them, like, unimaginably. It's really nice to um, see all of mm. the good work that's happening. And social media is evolving so quickly. Like five years ago, we would be talking about different mediums and different um, um, styles and different methods to reach these people. And I'm, I'm sure it was going to change very quickly. We will have new, um, new technologies, new mediums. But um, what do you think about the role of sustainability, social responsibility, which is turning into this goodness uh, concept in the whole world. Because first we were doing good to people, and then there was a phase, uh, another 10 years, where we all talked about corporate social responsibility, having a project was enough. And then 10 years ago, we first heard about sustainability, which was making your CSR projects, making your actions in a sustainable format, otherwise they didn't count much. Now we are entering an uh, era of goodness. Whatever we do, all we have, it, they have to incorporate some goodness inside. And I think uh, social media, however it um, evolves, will be uh, will play the biggest part in uh, inspiring, in uh, in the impact you carry to all these millions of people, and you are being as role models, you know. And when the world is getting so racist, so polarized. And um, how do you see the future with, with this polarized and dividing world, you know? Do you think we can make a change? <laughs> Um, I think the biggest challenges for us uh, as TRT World and as people who are in more in the business of news is we see this very depressing picture every day. Mm -hmm. um, but especially as TRT World and personally as DDAM, I what I want to do at the end of the day is um, we of course have to inform our audience, but at the same time leave people with a sense of hope. Mm -hmm. So that that's why I think that for our work to have hope, then I try to have hope. And I think like as you are out outlining people I do believe that genuinely care about goodness and as um, Sarah was saying they want to do good but problems of our day seem so gi giant that, that they're even um, difficult to tackle for governments individuals feel like how are we even going to have a part so I think the biggest thing for us I think to leave people with hope as um, media organizations but I think also as individual influencers um, and I think Check, check. Okay. Um, and I feel like as influencers, people kind of look up to us and they kind of relate to us, you know? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, and I'm not someone who did amazing things with their lives. I'm just a regular person who has the, the, the connection with people. Um, and it's so great to have this power when you're 24 only. 22. <laughs> 22? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. It, it's amazing to have this power when you're so young. Yes, congratulations. And she's only 24. And you know, uh, it's, the, the room is full of amazing women, yes. You're, I'm listening, sorry. Oh, thank you, it means a lot. Um, but I feel like people kind of, as she said, um, people kind of feel like this is too far away from them. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm too young, I'm, 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 uh, I'm not big enough to do this. But it starts as, as small as it is just spreading the word, as uh, just telling people your story or sharing other people's stories. Um, so spreading good is really not as hard as people think it is. It just starts with starting a conversation. Yeah, what I would like to add is that I am personally from a family of refugees. When India and Pakistan got partitioned in 1947, my grandfather, my great-grandfather were in refugee camps. And, and now we're, leaving, we're leading normal lives. You know, I would like to say that I would really want people in the camps 
people who are lost, especially children, to have homes of their own, have citizenship, go back home or stay here, but have happy lives. Yes, and I think Turkey uh, totally deserves it. Um, applause for this yes. among the whole world, you know. There is no one other I country so. with more refugees in the world. Stand up yes. and, and they're so welcome. And for. thank you for listening to us. And thank you for joining us at our panel. Thank, thank you. you.